Picking the right vertical niche or industry to work with could be the most important thing you do in your drop servicing business. It could mean the difference between making zero dollars and having a six figures plus per year business. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the three must have keys to picking a great and solid vertical niche. Hey, what's going on? It's Sean Anthony. If you're an entrepreneur looking to level up your business, your skills, and your income, head below right now, hit that subscribe button. I post videos just like this every Tuesday and Thursday. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the three must have keys to picking a killer vertical niche or industry to work with in your drop servicing business, okay? Doesn't matter what you pick. They need to have these three things present or you're going to struggle. So let's just jump right into it. Number one is they need to be clearly defined and identifiable. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when you look at people in the niche, you need to be able to say that's an accountant or that's a plumber or that is a financial advisor or that is a home remodeler, right? So you need to be able to look at people in the niche and clearly identify them and be able to point them out, okay? That's number one. Number two, is they need to be accessible to you. So the decision maker, the person who will actually pay you the money for your service, you need to be able to contact them, right? Whether it's Facebook, LinkedIn, email, phone call, it can't be like some big enterprise company where it's gonna take you five, six, seven people to get to the person who's gonna be able to pay you. So you should be able to access the actual decision maker or the owner of the business, right? Number three is they need to be able to pay you. Okay, so you don't wanna target someone like college students, right? If you target college students with like marketing services, you will never make a cent, right? So you need to pick industries where they're already ideally spending money on similar services to yours and they're an industry that's been around and has money, right? So I'm gonna show you five recommended vertical niches or industries right here in a second. I'm gonna jump right into my computer. I'm gonna show you five recommended niches recommended vertical niches that fit all three of these must have keys, okay? So let's jump right into it. All right, you guys know the drill. I'm here in my Google Doc and I'm gonna walk you through my five recommended vertical niches or industries that you can get into if you're starting a drop servicing business, right? So uh, these are in no particular order, but they all fit the three must have keys that I talked about. They're clearly, clearly def defined or identified they are accessible to you, right? The decision maker, you can get a hold of them through one of the channels like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, email, phone calls. They're accessible to you because they need to be able to pay you money, right? Which leads us to number three, which is do they have the money to pay you and are they already spending money on similar types of services, okay? So all five of these industries that I'm gonna go through here fit those three keys. So let's jump right into it. Number one is, and these are in no particular order, right? Number one is HVAC, so heating, ventilation, air conditioning. Uh, you guys probably know what this is. You probably have an AC in your house. These are companies that install that, right? So for businesses and residential, these, are, these HVAC companies, they're everywhere, right? They're local businesses, there's corporate HVAC companies. Uh, but let's just take a look here. How big is this industry? So if I go to how big is the HVAC industry, we're gonna see it's multi-billion dollar industry, $118.7 billion in 2017. So do they have the money to pay us? Yes, they do, right? They're a big industry. Are they clearly defined? Yes, they are, because we know the companies that are providing heating, ventilation, and AC, those are HVAC companies, right? So they're clearly defined. Oh, and if you wanna know real quick how I found this industry here, right? How did I think of it? Did I just pull it out of my head? No, I didn't. I used a marketplace like this, house.com. This is where you can actually find people to work on your house. And if you go to find professionals here, you can see here air conditioning and heating. And I can click on this and I can see all these different contractors. Now these businesses, they need to pay to be on this platform. So I already know right off the bat, they're paying money to be on here, which means they're already spending money on marketing services, okay? So that gives me, that answers that question of are they already spending money? Do they have the money, right? Also, are they accessible to us? Well, yeah, we can contact them here. We can contact contact on the phone, on email, uh, Facebook groups, on LinkedIn, they're everywhere, right? So you can definitely access the owner on any of these platforms here, okay? So I'm gonna put a yes for accessible. So that is HVAC, heating, ventilation, AC. Number two is kitchen and bathroom, bathroom remodelers and designers, right? So these are people that design and remodel your kitchen and your bathroom. How did I find this? Well, again, I found it on house.here. 
uh, house.com. If I go to find professionals, I'll go here and you can see kitchen and bath designers, kitchen and bathroom modelers, tens of thousands of different contractors in this industry alone. How big is this industry? Let's check it out. How big is kitchen and bath? Multi-billion, $158.11 billion, right? So do they have the money? Yes, they do. Are they clearly defined? Yes, they are because they have kitchen and bathrooms that they remodel and design. Are they accessible? Yes, the same platforms. You can contact them on house, uh, phone call, email, Facebook, LinkedIn, all these platforms, you can get a hold of them. So yes, they are. Now, real quick, who would be an example of companies that are not accessible, right? So you don't wanna be reaching out to companies like Microsoft or huge enterprise companies where you actually can't get a hold of the person who runs the business that can pay you the money, right? Even some medical industries I stay away from because you have to go through multiple gatekeepers to get to the actual doctor or the person themselves, right? Uh, but that leads me to my third one here, which is also is actually a doctor, is dermatologists, right? These are specialists and highly paid doctors who focus on the skin. So med anything medical or surgical having to do with the skin, that's a dermatologist too. So are they clearly defined? Yes, they are, right? There are doctors that have to do with the skin. They specialize in the skin. Are they accessible to us? They have Instagram pages, they have Facebook pages, they have LinkedIn pages, uh, email, phone call. Yes, you can get a hold of the, the actual owner of the business or the dermatologist themselves through any of those channels. So yes, they are accessible. Do they have money? Uh, let's see how much they get paid. So salary of dermatologists, 400, 400,000 or so, right? So they're highly paid doctors. I think a regular general practitioner makes around 100 something thousand a year. $400,000 a year, and they usually have some type of clinic that they work in, that they own and they operate, and they so they have multiple people in the business, right? They need to grow their practice or their clinic. So dermatologists, yes, they do have money as well, and they're spending money on Facebook ads and similar marketing services, social media marketing and branding as well, okay? So that's number three, dermatologists. Number four, and this is kind of a left hook for you guys, right? Recruitment and staffing agencies. So if you watch my videos, you probably know that I love the B2B business to business industry, right? Which is recruitment and staffing agencies. What they do, if you don't know, they help other companies. They're kind of the middlemen or the middle women, right? So they help companies find employees to join the company, right? So they're usually the ones that are phoning and screening and interviewing uh, candidates for certain companies, right? So they help to recruit and actually employ people for other companies on their behalf, right? So are they clearly defined? I'm gonna show you a little sales navigator trick here, which is a, a part of LinkedIn. It's, it's a, an upgraded platform to help you with your prospecting. If I go here to advanced search, and I go to search for accounts here, and I go here to industry, you can see there's an entire industry tab for staffing and recruiting. Now let's just say I wanted to search for companies in staffing and recruiting in the United States of America. And I want to find companies with only, let's go one through 10, up to 200 employees, right? We actually work with companies up to 200 employees in our agency growth response. So this is what I'm using here, right? So companies in staffing and recruiting in the United States with one to 200 employees, and there's 23,035 companies, right? So I'm gonna click search here. How big is this industry? Well, let's, let's just take a look here. How big is the recruitment? $148.1 billion in 2018, right? So let's go through this again. Are they clearly defined? Yes, there's an entire industry dedicated to them on, on LinkedIn as well. Are they accessible? We can absolutely act, access them on LinkedIn. We can probably send them an email. I'm sure you've gotten recruitment emails before if you're looking for a job. Uh, but yes, we can access them, right? Do they have money to pay us? Well, you just saw it's a multi-billion dollar industry, right? $148 billion. So yes, they have the money to pay you. And yes, they're spending money on marketing services themselves to grow their staffing agencies, their recruitment agencies, okay? Now, last, lastly, number five, this is also a B2B industry. It's a newer industry, but it's up and coming. I'm actually looking and going to this industry myself, which is the e-learning industry, right? These are companies that do online education, right? They sell, different types of training and learning and education online away from the traditional university type of model, right? So e-learning companies, are they clearly defined? Again, if I go to Sales Navigator here, I can see because they're B2B a lot of the time, I can go here, 
e-learning. There's an entire industry dedicated to e-learning. And right here in the United States, e-learning companies with one to 200 employees, there's 11,216 of them. If I click search, you can see all these companies here, right? Like all these companies, different pages and pages and pages of them. Uh, these are all e-learning companies that I can reach out to, right? So how big is this industry? Let's check it out. How big is the e-learning industry? estimated over $165 billion in 2015. So yes, they have money. Are they clearly defined? Yes, they're companies that do online education. Are they accessible to us? Yes, I can get a hold of them through probably cold email and also LinkedIn like you just saw here, okay? So these are five companies, five vertical niches or industries that I would recommend or that I would consider getting into that fit the three keys that I talked about, right? Are they clearly defined and identifiable? Are they accessible to us? Do they have the money to pay us? And are they already spending money on similar services? All five of these fit that, right? So HVAC, number one. Number two is kitchen and bathroom remodelers and designers. Number three is dermatologists. Number four is recruitment and staffing agencies. And number five is e-learning companies, okay? So that's it for this video. I hope this was helpful to get the, the brain juices flowing here. Uh, I will link to on the side here, I did a previous video on drop servicing and seven recommended services that you could provide to maybe any of these companies here, right? So I'll link to those videos over here, over here. I'm not really sure it's gonna show up, but yeah, I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you like this, make sure you give, that a, give this video a like below comment with any questions and concerns that you have and let me know what you wanna see in the next video. Okay, I wanna help you guys out, I wanna provide value and I, I'm only gonna know how to do that if you let me know what you wanna see, okay? So again, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Make sure you check out the related videos here and take care. I'll see you in the next video.